Hi everyone, this is Neil from Edureka and welcome to today's session on Informatica Power Center tutorial. Now let's move ahead and look at today's agenda. We'll begin the session by first having an overview of the Informatica Power Center tool. Then we'll move on to understand why we need data integration and the ETL process through which we achieve data integration. After that I'll be showing you the five different tools that Informatica Power Center offers us. The first is the administrative console, then we have the repository manager, following that is the Informatica Power Center designer, then there's the workflow manager and finally we have the Informatica Power Center workflow monitor. So any questions about today's agenda? Alright Ajay is clear. So is Saurabh, Matthew, Jessica, Tyler, all right. So now let's move ahead and have an overview of Informatica Power Center. Now Informatica provides us with the market's leading data integration tool and one of the most widely used ETL tool that is the Informatica Power Center. Now there are various processes through which you can achieve data integration but ETL is the most preferred process and Informatica Power Center is the most widely used ETL tool. Now through Informatica Power Center you can achieve various operations like migrating your data from various sources to a common source or let's say if you wish to integrate the application data from various applications to a common application then you can achieve that using Informatica Power Center. Now apart from that let's say if you wish to convert the data from various formats to a common format then this can be achieved using Informatica Power Center. Now when we talk about the Power Center applications we have mainly five of them. Now they can broadly be classified based on their usage to administration and developer. Now when we look at the administration side we have two major tools here. We'll begin with the Informatica repository manager. Now the repository manager mainly helps us in managing a repository. When we talk about a repository it is basically a collection of various objects that you'll be using throughout the process. Here again everything that you create and everything that you will be used will be considered as an object so that it becomes easy for you to handle. Now another key feature of the repository manager is to help you connect to various repositories that you have and apart from that you can also manage your work folders. So let's say each product will have a separate work folder so you can manage them, you can compare them or let's say if you wish to create a duplicate you can do all that using the repository manager. So are you clear with respect to the repository manager? Okay, so John is clear, so is Ajay, Tyler, so Saurabh has a question, what do I mean by objects in repository? Alright Saurabh, so Saurabh, everything that you use, let's say if it's a source definition or let's say if you're creating a mapping or if it's a workflow, all these would be considered as an individual objects to be operated on. So when we talk about an object, every instance that you be creating would be considered as an object here. Alright, so Saurabh is clear on that. Okay, so any more questions with respect to the repository manager? John is clear, Matthew, so is Tyler. Okay, now the second administrative tool and the most essential administrative tool is the administration console. Now the main use of the administrative console can be broadly divided into two aspects. The first is to maintain the domain as well as perform all the domain operations and the second is to monitor the tasks as well as add or remove any existing services that will be running. Now when you look at the domain aspect, mainly creation and configuration of individual nodes in that domain. When we talk about a node, it basically means a machine. So if you're using a server client architecture or let's say if you are using multiple systems with Informatica in an organization, then each of the system would be considered to be a node and the main system that has the Informatica server would have all the details of this domain. Apart from that, you can add and remove various services and tasks that you wish to run for each of the users as well. So be clear on the administrative console, all right. Now when we look at the developer tools, we have mainly three developer tools here. So the first is the designer tool. Now in the designer tool, you will basically be creating various ETL mappings. So when I talk about a mapping, it is basically an iconic representation of all the objects that you'll be using. So for a source, there'll be an iconic representation, a transformation, there'll be an iconic representation, a target, there'll be an iconic representation. So here what you'll be basically doing is that you'll be creating a mapping on which you'll be mentioning all the transformations. So when we talk about transformations, these are basically the set of rules through which you'll change the data to the required format which you wish. And the mapping is basically a representation on how this transformation or how this change has to happen from the source to the target definition. So you'll have various icons that will be present there. So you'll have one icon representing the source. 
and then there'll be the target definition. So what you'll be doing is you'll be using various transformation icons specifying the rules that you wish in them and then you'll be connecting them across. So once you've connected this mapping or created this mapping, you have basically defined how the data has to change from the source to the target definition to meet your requirements. So is that clear Saurav? All right. Now coming to the second developer tool, we have the workflow manager. Now when we look at a mapping, it is by default not executable. There all you're defining is a set of rules on how the data has to be changed. But to execute this mapping, we need to create a workflow. A workflow basically is associated to a mapping so that the Informatica Power Center can then go ahead and execute this so that the data transfer happens. And finally, with the workflow monitor, you can monitor the execution of this workflow. So here you will have all the access to control the execution of the workflow. So let's say if you wish to stop a workflow at a certain time or if you wish to restart it for better understanding or if you want, you can execute a workflow at a fixed schedule time as well. So there are various operations with respect to the workflow monitor. We'll be seeing them in the coming slides. So are we clear with respect to the various power center client applications? Okay, so Ajay has a question here. What do I mean by workflow? So as I mentioned, a mapping is not by default executable. So what you're going to be doing here is that you're going to be creating a workflow, which is an executable format for that mapping. So Ajay, when I talk about a workflow, it is basically an executable process through which you will execute the mapping. Now you've already defined the rules that need to be applied while the data is going to be transferred. So what this process does is basically transfers the data from the source to the target definition by applying all these rules. Don't worry if you're not clear with respect to the workflow, we'll talk about the workflow in detail when we talk about the workflow manager. So any other questions? All right, so Divya is clear. So it's Jessica, Ajay, Santosh. That's great to hear. Now, before we move ahead and look at the Informatica Power Center tool, it is essential for us to understand why the tool came into use in the first place. So for that, let's try to understand the need for data integration. Now, it's a common knowledge that these days a huge amount of data is being generated from every organization. But when you are generating this huge amount of data to make a business decision, you need to process this data. So before we go ahead, let us look at the example here. So this basically is a simple organization where you're using multiple applications in each of the department. So here you can see the marketing team is using an Oracle database. The sales team is using the Salesforce database and so forth. So when you have various applications being used to store your data, it becomes problematic to gather the data from all these applications and process them because each of these applications may use its own data type to store this data. So while you're trying to integrate this, you may need to create various interfaces. You may need to make use of various adapters and it becomes a tedious task for you. Now to overcome this, the process of data integration came into picture. Through data integration, what you're doing is that you're gathering the data from all these sources or you're making use of various processes through which you're assuring that the data can be gathered from all these sources and then easily processed. Now to achieve data integration, there are various processes that you can do. And among them, the most popular and the most widely used process is the ETL process. Now when we talk about the ETL process, it can mainly be divided into three main phases. The first phase is the extract phase where you're extracting the data from various sources. Then you transform this data to convert the data to a required format that you want. And then you finally load it into a target data warehouse. So once you have all the data in a common format in a target data warehouse, it becomes quite easy for you to process this data. Now, while you are transforming this data and loading it into the data warehouse, it mainly assures you three things. First is that it is relevant data that you're storing and then it is quite easy for you to make business decisions. Then you also ensure that there is the data is highly accurate and usable because you are making sure that there's a quality check that happens through the transformation. And finally, once it's on a data warehouse, it's quite easy for the business users to check this data and validate it as well. Now let's look at the image below here. So here what we're doing is we are extracting the data from four different sources. First is an XML file, second is a COBOL file, third is a flat file and finally we are extracting a relational table from a database as well. So once you've extracted the data from these sources, you bring it to the playground of the transformation. Here you'll be performing a set of operations based on which the data will be converted to the required format that you choose. 
So let's say if you wish to decode and encode data in the database, you can do that as well. Or let's say if you wish to convert the data to a normalized format, that is also possible through transformation. Once you've processed this data, then you can go ahead and store it into the data warehouse. So any questions with respect to why we need data integration and what is an ETL process? Okay, so Santosh has a question here. How is transformation different from data integration? So Santosh, when we talk about transformation, it basically refers to the process through which you're converting the data to a required format. Now data integration is the bigger umbrella here. You have various ways through which you can achieve data integration. Transformation is just one of the process through which you can achieve data integration. So are you clear Santosh? Okay. Any more questions with respect to ETL process and why we need data integration? All right. Okay. So. Tyler has a question here. What is the difference between a data warehouse and a database? Now they're both quite similar actually Tyler, but when we look at a database, it is mainly used to store a day to day basis details. So let's say if you're processing a transactional detail, you're mainly going to use a database to store this details. But a data warehouse is something quite similar to a database, but there it's mostly used for reading operations rather than writing operations. So this is something that you'll mainly be using when you're looking at it from an analytical process. So if you wish to analyze the data that you have generated, you'll be using a data warehouse over a database. So are you clear Tyler? All right. Okay. So Saurabh has a question here. What transformations are we using here? So Saurabh, there are 33 different types of transformations that Informatica Power Center offers us. Now you can use all of these in various combinations to convert the data to your required format. So don't worry about that. You'll be learning more about that when we're talking about Informatica transformations in our next session. All right. So now let's move ahead and look at the Informatica Power Center Administration Console. Now the Administration Console is mainly used to operate on the domain on which your organization is going to be working. So here you may mainly be working on the various node operations as well as operating on the various services that will run. So here when we talk about service, there are mainly two services. One is the repository services and the second is the integration services. Don't worry, we'll be talking about them when we look at the administration console in detail. Now apart from this, the administration console is also used to maintain the security and privileges across the users. So let's say you have a team working on the Informatica Power Center tool. Not everyone may get the same privilege as the team lead or let's say as the administrator as well. Now when we talk about these key roles of an administration in the Informatica tool, he needs to be quite well versed and well used to the administrative console. So here he'll be needed to either add or manage various nodes that will be used in the organization or let's say he need to maintain log of all the events that will be occurring and so forth. Now don't worry, I'll be showing you the administrative console. So here you can see what an administrative console looks like. Now I have my Informatica server as well as my client installed on the same system so I can directly access it. But this may not be the same case that you may come across while you're working in an organization where they've made use of the server on a single system and all the other systems have been configured to be a node. So you can see here in my domain I have a single node that is my current system. Apart from that you can see the repository services as well as the integration services configured. Now the repository services is a services that mainly manages the repository manager. So it is something that converts the various instances that you use to objects as well as it monitors every change that you make with respect to the repositories. Now when we come down to the integration services, this is the application which mainly operates on the data. So when you're executing a workflow, you're basically starting the integration services. This service will then move ahead to transfer the data from the source to the target definition applying all the transformations. So all the rules that you are defining in the mapping will mainly be for the knowledge of the integration service. So are you clear with respect to the repository service as well as the integration service? Okay. Now when we talk about the integration service, it is mainly service which maintains as well as manages the workflows that you'll be creating. Now what the integration service does is that it is the service which actually executes this workflow. So when you're executing a workflow, you're basically starting the integration service. So once you've started the integration service, what it does, it goes to the mapping, it checks which is the source, which is the target, as well as it treats all the rules on which the data has to be changed. 
So once it's understood these rules, it takes the data from the source, it operates on this data based on the rules that you have defined, and then it stores it on the target definition. So are you clear with respect to what the integration service is sort of? All right. Now here, if you come to the logs tab, you can see the list of all the operations that have happened in your current domain. So here I just have certain logs, but let's say if you have various nodes present in your organization, and let's say if one has crashed, and if you wish to understand why, you can come to the logs and check the processes of that node and then identify why there has been a crash. Then we have the monitoring tab. So here it's mainly used to monitor the operations of each user as well as the tasks that they'll be running. So since I don't have separate users, I do not have anything presently here, but this is something that you will be seeing a lot when you're moving into an organization. Now when you come to the reports tab, now this is something that you'll be mainly using if you have various licenses for your organization as well as you're including various web services. Now these web services could be a cloud-based storage or let's say if you wish to have a regular mail sent to you after the execution of various workflows then you need to configure a service for that and that will be mainly managed here. After that is the security tabs. Now here when you talk about the security tabs again it's mainly based on the user groups and roles that you assign for them. So if there's a team, you'll be creating a new group and each of the team member will be a user. So there you can basically define the privileges given to each of them. So as I had mentioned, the access only to the integration service, but if you're a team leader, then you may have the access to the repository services as well. So are you clear with respect to the administrative console? All right. So we've seen the various tabs that are present. The final tab that I have not discussed is about the cloud. So if you're making use of the Informatica cloud, then you can bring your organization to the cloud platform and then configure each of the nodes here. Now, before we move ahead and look at the remaining four tools, it will be helpful for you if I use a use case and help you understand how each of these tools are used. Now here to help you understand how these tools work, let's look at a use case. Now, let's say you're a retail organization. Now it's high time that you migrate your existing table to a database in which you can store all the upcoming details as well. Now while you're migrating this data, you need to check if there are certain inconsistencies in your data. To do that, what you're going to be doing is that you're going to be using an expression transformation in which you'll be writing the condition through which you'll be checking. So don't worry if you're not clear with respect to the expression transformation, I'll be showing you how it's done. Now to solve this problem, we'll be dividing it into four different phases. Now each of these phases will be using one of the key tools. Now the first phase will be using the repository manager where we'll be creating a new work folder. After that we'll be using the power center designer in which we'll be designing our mapping and making use of the expression transformation through which we'll be identifying the inconsistencies. Now in the first phase we'll be making use of the Informatica power center repository manager where we'll be creating a new work folder to store all the objects that you will be creating in this session. After that, we will be using the Informatica Power Center Designer where we'll be creating the mapping through which we'll be defining the rules on the data from the source to the target definition. Then we'll move on to look at the workflow manager. Here what I'll be showing you is how to create a workflow and set the session properties for this workflow. And finally, we'll monitor the execution of the workflow and check these source target statistics. Now the source target statistics will help us understand the number of rows from the source that have been extracted as well as the transformations have been applied on them and finally how many rows have been stored in the target definition. So are we clear with respect to the four different phases? Okay, so Matthew is clear, so is Ajay, so is Santosh, great. Now we'll move ahead and look into the first phase. Now the first phase involves the Informatica Power Center Repository Manager. Now as we've discussed the repository manager is mainly used to maintain and monitor all the objects that are being created. Now this is mainly done by the repository services which will manage this repository manager. So when you launch a repository manager by default a repository service will also be running in the background. Now apart from maintaining and managing these objects you will mainly be using the repository manager to create a new working folder in which you'll be storing all the objects correspondingly. So here if you look at the image you can mainly divide the repository manager into three sections. The first is the repository workspace, the second is the output field and the third is the navigator. So here you can see we have various folders present. So this, we have sources, we have targets, we have mappings. So sort of coming back to your question, so every mapping that you will be creating, so you can see I have five different mappings present here. Now each of these mappings are considered to be an object in the repository. So are you clear? All right. 
So let's move ahead and look at the Informatica Power Center repository manager. So here to my left you can see there's a navigator but the workspace as well as the output field are now not available. So now to make them available you need to connect to your repository. Now you may have various repositories or let's say if you wish to add a new repository all you need to do is go to the repository tab and select add a repository. But make sure your repositories are present in the same domain or if you wish to add a new domain as well just go to the configure domain and here you can add a new domain as well. So I already have a repository created so let me just connect to that. So select the repository and click on the connect icon present here. So you'll automatically be asked the username and password for the repository. So once you've set them just click on the connect option to connect to your repository. Now since all the upcoming tools are linked to each other they follow a continuous process. Informatica already has given us the client tools present on each tools. So while you're working on the repository manager if you wish to launch any other tools all you need to do is click on the corresponding tools here. So this is present across all the four tools that you're going to be seeing ahead. Now coming back here you can see we have various work folders present here and inside them you can see there are sub folders. So let me show you just one folder. So here you can see we have source, we have targets, mappings, workflow and configuration. Now in the source folder you can see there are the various tables that I have created. Now these are not the actual tables but the metadata of these tables. So each of these metadata is being considered to be an object. Similarly in the target folder there are metadata of the target definitions that I have created. So now let's move ahead and come back to our use case. So to go ahead we'll be creating a new work folder. So all you need to do is go to the folders tabs and select create option. Now let's set a name for our work folder. Now one thing to be kept in mind is that Informatica does not support use of space in its naming convention. So always instead of using space you can use an underscore. So immediately once you click on OK a new work folder gets created. Now this is helpful when you're working on various projects. So to store all the sources definitions that you'll be creating in that project it's suggested that you create a corresponding work folder. So any questions with respect to the repository manager? So Saurabh is clear. So is Matthew and Tyler, Jessica. That's great. That's great. So now it's time we move ahead with the phase two of our solution. Now for this phase two we'll be going to be using the next tool that is the power center designer. Now the power center designer is used mainly to load the metadata of various sources and targets as well as create a mapping. So here below you can see a mapping that is being created which will help you join two different sources. So if you look here you can see we have two source definitions. One is a flat file and the second is an oracle relational table. What we're doing here is that we're using a joiner transformation and then joining these two sources and then storing it into a target definition. Now don't worry you'll be learning how to do this in our Informatica transformation session so you do not have to worry too much about it. Now apart from that we can mainly divide here again into three fields. We have the workspace, you have the navigator option to your left as well as the, you have the output field below. Now when we talk about the workspace in Power Center Designer we mainly have five different workspaces. Now the first workspace that we'll be looking at is the source analyzer workspace. Now here what you're using this workspace is to mainly either create or load a source definition from an existing table. So this table could be in a flat file or it could be in a relational table or any platform that you choose. After that we have the target definition. Similar to the source analyzer workspace this workspace is used to create or import target definitions from an existing table. Now Following that we have the mapping designer workspace. Here you are mainly going to be creating the mapping that you're going to be using. So don't worry I'll show you how it's done. So let's go back to the Informatica Power Center repository manager and launch the Power Center designer. So all you need to do is click on the D icon and automatically Informatica Power Center designer is launched. So by default every time you launch the power center designer you're set to the source analyzer workspace. So here we'll begin by first loading the source definition of our product table. Now before I go ahead let me show you how the product table looks like. So 
So here you can see we have various columns with respect to the product details. We have the product ID, product name, product company, the date which the product was added on, the URL, product cost and finally we have the total number of products sold. Now you can see there are certain fields where the product ID is null. So what we need to do is that we need to create an expression through which we'll identify these rows and then set a consistency flag for them so that it becomes easier for the end user to identify this inconsistencies and make the required updates. So now let's go back to the power center designer and load the source definition. Now the flag that I was talking about sort of it basically is a, let's say I'm what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new column to the product table where I set a flag. So this flag basically is a string which will help me identify. So let's say if the product ID is null, I'll set the flag to be yes. If it's not, I'll just set it as no. So based on this, you can filter out the data and then get all the rows in which the flag has been set as yes. So it'll be easier for you to identify which rows need to be updated. Are you clear? Sort of? Okay. Now, once you are in the source analyzer workspace, just go to the source tab. Here you can see we can import the table from various sources. You can import it from a database, import it from a file, or you can say you can import it from a COBOL file or an XML definition as well. Now, apart from that, there are various sources through which you can import, or if you wish to create a source definition, you can create it as well. So my source table is already present in the flat file, so let me just import it. So click on source and select import from file. Here what you need to do is that you need to select the source file from the path it is presented. Now by default Informatica checks for the source file inside its default source file directory but let's say you've stored it in a different location then make sure you remember this location because you need to configure it while you're running the workflow. Now to load the data from a flat file Informatica gives us a flat file import wizard. Now this makes it quite easy for the user to import the data from a flat file. So here all you need to do is just use the wizard and import all the data. So let's say if you're using a fixed width flat file, you just need to change here or if it's a delimiter, you can let it be the default option. Now one thing that you need to remember in this step one is that if the first row of your table contains the field names, make sure you import the field names from the first row. Because if you do not do that, what happens is that the field names are not set for the source that you're importing. So click on next. Here, if you have used any other delimiter apart from comma, then specify it. So here you can see the source definition being created for my data. So you have the product ID, product name, as well a corresponding length, precision and a data type has been associated. So here what Informatica does is that it takes a sample value from all the data and then it assigns the corresponding data type, length, precision and scale. So if you wish to change this, you are always free to change that while you are importing it here. So with this, click on finish and we have successfully imported the source definition from the flat file. So any doubts with respect to how to load a source definition? Alright, Saurabh is clear, so is Ajay, Matthew, John. That's great. Now that we have loaded the source definition, it's time we go ahead and create a mapping for the required operation. So all you need to do is go to the last option from the five icons present here, that is the mapping designer, click on it and you'll be directed to the mapping designer workspace. Here let's begin by loading the source definition that we have just added. So inside the source folder, you can find the flat file that we have just loaded. So just select it and drag and drop it to the workspace. Now you need to name your mapping. By convention, it is suggested all mappings have a prefix of M, all targets have a prefix of TGT, as well as all workflows have a prefix of WF. So this basically helps you in differentiating these objects as per your requirements. Now once you've loaded the source definition, another transformation is automatically created that is the source qualifier transformation. You do not need to worry about this. We'll talk about this in detail when we're talking about Informatica transformations. Now it's time we create the expression transformation. Now to do that, just go to the transformation tab and select create option. Here you need to specify expression transformation and give a name for this expression transformation. Once you click on create, we have created the expression transformation.
So any doubts still here on how to create a transformation or how to load the source definition to the workspace? Okay, Saurav wants me to talk more about the expression transformation. So Saurav, the expression transformation is basically a passive transformation. You're going to be using the expression transformation to perform row wise operation. Now when I talk about a passive transformation, basically the number of rows that pass through this do not change. Now I'll be showing you how you can use the expression transformations to check the values in this corresponding rows. Apart from that, let's say if you wish to concatenate the first name and the last name of your employees or let's say if you wish to compute the total salary that you need to pay your employees based on it is basic as well as bonus. So you can use an expression transformation in these cases. Don't worry, we'll talk about the expression transformation also in detail in our transformation session. Now to go ahead, we need all the values present in the source qualifier. So just right click, select all, drag it and drop it to the expression transformation. So here what we've done is that we've ensured all the columns present in the source qualifier transformation are present in the expression transformation and we've linked these icons. So it's important that you link the icons correctly because what you're doing is that you're setting the rules. So while the data is being transferred from each of these transformations, these links help you identify from which column the value has to go to which column. Basically the product ID value from the source qualifier has to go to the product ID column in the expression transformation. So that is why the links are essential. Now it's time we added the expression transformation. Just double click on the expression transformation and you'll get an option. Now one key feature that Informatica Power Center offers us is to make a transformation reusable. Now when I talk about a reusable transformation, it basically means that a transformation that you're using in one mapping can also be used in a different mapping. Now this is only possible if a transformation is reusable. So if you make this transformation reusable, what happens is this transformation objects gets automatically created inside the transformation folder in your work folder. Let me show you. Just click on make reusable and click on apply. Now you can find this transformation, this expression transformation inside your transformation folder. So, so let's say there's an other mapping in which you wish to use the same expression transformation. So all you need to do is drag and drop it to your workspace and automatically that would be created. So you don't have to manually create this expression transformation again. So here if you go to the ports tab, you can see that none of the ports are editable. So this is one thing that is that you need to keep in mind is that if you're using a reusable transformations, you cannot edit the transformation here in the mapping designer workspace. Now, to edit this expression transformation, what you need to do is that we need to go to the fourth workspace that we'll be talking about, that is the transformation developer workspace. Now here, this workspace is mainly used to edit and modify reusable transformations. So just drag and drop the reusable transformation. And now if you go to the ports tab, you can see you can modify these ports. So in case if it is not a reusable transformation, you can directly modify it in your mapping designer workspace. So are you clear with respect to what a reusable transformation is and how you can change it? Okay, great. So now what we need to do is that we need to create a new column in which we'll be setting the inconsistency flag. Now to do that, all you need to do is click on add a new port option here. So here, let me name it as inconsistency flag. Since it's going to be storing a string, let it be data type of string and I'll give the precision of 5. Now this is not a value that I'll be getting as input. This is something that I need to compute. So let me uncheck the input option and automatically the expression field is unlocked. Now by doing this, what we are trying to achieve is that we are telling the integration service that this value is not something that I get from my source. This is something that you have to compute from the expression that I'll be specifying. So here, once you select on the expression field, you'll get an arrow mark. Just click on it and you'll get the expression editor. Now coming back to our problem, what we need to do is that we need to identify the rows which have product ID as none. So let me just show you a formula through which it is done. So I'm going to be using an if and as well as an is null operation. So here we'll check if it is is null, then you need to specify what to do if it is null or not. Now, the value that I need to check if it is null is the product ID. So inside the port tab, just select the product ID. So what here it will do is it will check if it is null. Now in case it's null, what has to be done? So if it is null, the flag needs to be set as yes. Else no. 
so are we clear with respect to the expression through which we are checking if it is null or not okay Saurabh is clear so it's Matthew Ajay that's great that's great now if you're writing an expression and you're not sure if it is right or wrong what you can do is that you can validate it so every time that you click on validate Informatica will check if the expression that you have specified is valid or not so click on OK click on apply and click on OK. now come back to our mapping workspace now it's time we create a target definition now there are two ways to create a target definition one is either to go to the target designer workspace and manually create a target or you can create a target based on a transformation now I want my target to have the same columns as my expression transformation so I'm going to model my target definition to be same as the expression transformation so you can create a target definition similar to any transformations that you wish all you need to do is right click on the transformation and select create and add target so automatically a target definition is created let me just modify it to meet my requirements now to do that just go to the target designer workspace inside the target folder you can find the target definition that you have created just drag it and drop it to the workspace here let me begin by renaming the target definition now once you double click on it you can directly rename it now by default since I'm using an Oracle database my target definition is also set to be an Oracle database so let's say if you wish to create a target definition that meets any other database type all you need to do is specify it or even if it's a flat file you can create a direct flat file so if you select on flat file you can select the delimiter as well as if you want to create a fixed width file that you can set it accordingly here again if you wish to make any changes with the columns present in the target table you can do that in the ports tab so since I'm not going to change any of this set click on apply and click on OK now we've created a definition on which the target table should be so it's time we create a target table in our database now to do that what you need to do is go to the targets tab and select generate and execute SQL option so using this option you can go ahead and create a target table in your database now the aim of doing this is that so that there is a target present when you're transferring the data from the source to the target table because Informatica by default does not create a new target table when the data has to be transferred so let's say if you do not do this step then while you're executing the workflow Informatica will give you an error that the target table does not exist now here click on create table option and click on generate and execute SQL so automatically Informatica will ask you to use the connection object to your database the connection object is an object through which you're connecting your Informatica power center to your database so I have already configured my object but let's say if you wish to add a new one just click on the dots and then add a new connection object once you specify the username and password for the database click on connect and below in the output field you can see an SQL has been executed so you can see a create table target underscore exp underscore product table has been executed to my database so any questions on how to create a target definition or how to create a target table in your database it's important that you understand this because if you're working with relational tables you need to follow these steps any questions guys okay Tyler is clear so is Saurav so is Matthew great now let's go back to our mapping and load the updated target definition so just remove the existing target definition drag and drop the updated target definition now the final step to complete the mapping is to link the expression transformation to the target definition now as you've done earlier you can either select all drag and drop it to the target definition or you can make use of the auto link feature provided by Informatica let me show you how it's done just right click on the workspace and select auto link option so here you can see the start point of the link as well as the end point of the link now apart from that you can link them by either comparing the column names or by comparing their positions since I want to link them by name I'm not going to change the option and once I click on apply now you can see a link has been created so once you've successfully created your mapping it's time we save this mapping now this is important because every time that you save your mapping Informatica checks if your mapping is valid or not so let me just save it and here in the output below you can see the mapping has been validated 
So when I talk about validity, basically refers if you've used this correct data types while you're transferring the data or if you've linked the data correctly, then Informatica will check you and let you know if your mapping is valid or not. Any questions with respect to Informatica Power Center Designer? Okay, so Mary is clear, so it's Jessica and Saurabh. That's great to hear. Now let's take a break of two minutes. All right, so let's come back. So with that, we have done with the phase two of our solution. It's time we move to the phase three of our solution. Now phase three involves the third tool that is the Informatica Power Center Workflow Manager. Now here, as I had discussed, we'll be mainly creating and starting the execution of various workflows. Now by default, a mapping is not executable. Please remember that to execute a mapping, we need to create a corresponding workflow. So let me show you how to create this. Now let's go back to the Informatica designer. Here you can either manually go ahead and create a workflow or you can automatically create a workflow for a simple map. Now to create a workflow automatically, you can just right click on the workspace and select generate workflow option. But to help you understand better, let me create a workflow manually. Now to do that, just click on the W icon and automatically the workflow manager is launched. So here again, as you've seen with respect to the designer, we have three workflows. First is the task developer, second is the worklet designer and third is workflow designer. Now we'll mainly be working on the workflow designer where we'll be creating workflows. Let's say if you're using reusable session or reusable tasks as such, then you need to go to the task developer and modify them. Similarly, how we had a separate workspace to modify and edit the reusable transformation. Same way, if you're using any reusable tasks, then you can modify them in the task developer workspace. Now after that, the worklet designer. So here again, let's say you have a group of reusable tasks that you wish to modify, or let's say if you have a huge workflow which is completely reusable, then you can modify them in the worklet designer. The workflow designer is a simple designer workspace where you'll be mainly modifying non-reusable objects. All right, so let me show you how to create a new workflow. Now to create a new workflow, go to the workflow tab and select create option. Here what you need to do is that you need to specify the name of the workflow. Now, as I had mentioned by convention, it is suggested you name your workflow with a prefix of WF. Now once you click on OK, you can see automatically a start icon has been created. Now the start icon basically is an executable icon which helps you understand that from this point the workflow is about to start. So if you create any other task without the start icon, they are not executable. So we have various tasks here. Now first is the session task that is if you wish to execute a mapping then you will be using a sessions task or let's say if you wish to execute any windows command then you'll be using the command task. And finally, there's the email task. Let's say if you wish to get an email after the execution of a task, then you can use the email task. Okay, so Tyler has a question here. What do I mean by a session? Now, a session basically is a task that has a mapping associated to it. So here what you're doing is that you're telling the integration service how to execute this mapping. Now in this mapping, you may have set of rules on how the data has to transfer, but again, you're going to be using a session task. You're telling the integration service that this is how you need to execute this mapping. So are you clear Tyler? All right. Now again, sessions are similar to transformations. You can create a reusable session and each session will have just one mapping associated to it. So now let me show you how to create a session. Just click on the session icon and once again, click on the workspace. So here automatically you'll be asked which mapping you wish to associate with this session. So this is a mapping that we have just created, select it and click on OK. Now again, like we have linked the icons in the mapping, we need to link the start to the workflow to help the integration service to understand that it needs to execute this session. So if you're not linking it, only the start icon would be run and the session icon would not be run. To link it, just go to the link option present here, select it, click on the icon from which to which you wish to link it. Now let me edit the session properties associated to it. So here again, if you wish to make it a reusable session, all you need to do is just click on the make reusable option and then it will be added into your sessions folder. 
Now, if you go to the properties tab, it basically is the general operations with respect to the sessions as well as its performance associated. Then when you come to the configuration object, most advanced operations like where the cache has to be stored, what buffer to use, as well as in case of an error, what to do, or if you wish to store your log details of the session in a specific place, you can change that here as well. Now coming down to the mapping tab, here you will have the details of your source, your target as well as your X transformations that you'll be using. Now I had mentioned to you earlier in case by default your source file is not present in the Informatica sources directory then you need to set the correct directory in the properties tab. So if you come down there will be a tab where you have to specify the source file directory. Here you need to set the correct source file directory where it is present. Now if you come to the targets option here you can see there is a connection object associated to it. So if you are writing your table into a database, then make sure you use the correct connection object. Now apart from that, one more thing to be kept in mind is the target load type. So we have two main types here. The first is a bulk and the second is a normal. Now when we talk about normal, basically you are reading every row and creating a corresponding log for that. But when we are talking about bulk, you group all the rows together and then process it but without creating a log for it. So if you are sure that your data is perfect then and you do not require a log for it then go with the bulk option or you can go with the normal option. Now again here the choice is based on your need for performance because bulk will take less time than normal because of creation of logs. So just click on apply and click on ok. Now before we go ahead and execute this workflow, just save it so that Informatica can validate it to see if it is correct or not. So in case if you have changed anything with respect to your mapping, then again you will find an error here when you are trying to save the workflow. So any questions with respect to the workflow manager? So John is clear, so is Tyler, Saurabh, Ajay, that's great. Now it's time we go to the final phase of our solution. Now the final phase of our solution involves the use of Informatica Power Center workflow monitor. Now this tool mainly helps us in monitoring the workflow. Now as I had discussed earlier you can start, you can stop, even restart a workflow as per your choice or you can see the duration that it takes as well as the status. Let me show you how it looks like. Now the workflow monitor is automatically launched when you start a workflow. Now you can start the workflow either by going to the workflow tab and selecting start workflow option or right click on the workspace and select start workflow option from here. So once you do that you can see automatically the workflow monitor has started as well as the execution of my workflow. So you can see successfully the workflow has been completed as well as the session has been successfully completed. So let me show you the source target statistics. Now you can either double click on the session icon or right click and go to the run properties. Now in case your workflow has not been successful or let's say a task has not been successful, here in the task details option you can get the error as well as the details of the error as to why it was not successful. Now when you come down to the source target statistics, you can see that there were 200 rows present in my source table on which all the 200 rows were affected from my transformation and they have been successfully transferred to my target table. So let me show you how the target table looks like. So you can see a new column has been added that is the inconsistency flag. Now once I filter out this, you can see we have both options yes and no. Let me just show you how the fields with yes look like. So you can see stronghold from OMBA basically has no product type. So the inconsistency flag has been set as yes. Similarly we have 17 inconsistencies. So it becomes easier for me to identify which rows need to be updated with the value. So with this my migration has also successfully happened as well as identification of inconsistencies. So any questions with respect to the workflow monitor? Alright. Now finally to summarize what we've learned today, we've started off our session by understanding why we needed data integration and what made us use the ETL process. After that we saw the Informatica administrative console as I had mentioned is something of key knowledge for most administrator in this domain and is present on the server side of the organization. 
After that, I showed you how each problem can be divided into four phases. Now, in the first phase, we use the repository manager to create a work folder to store all the objects that we have created. So let me go back to the repository manager and show you how these objects are. Now earlier there was just one folder which was configurations but now if you see inside my work folder there are five under the sources you can see this flat file that we have loaded, the target definition that we have loaded, the reusable transformation, the mapping that we have created as well as the workflow that we have created. So as I had mentioned each of these instances that we have created have been considered to be an object in that repository. Now after that I showed you how to create a mapping in the power center designer and you learned how to load various sources as well as how to create a target definition and how to make use of various transformations. Then we moved on ahead to use the Informatica workflow manager where we designed a new workflow and set the corresponding session properties. Finally we saw the execution of this workflow and we checked how the statistics was. So any question with respect to today's session or any of the tools so Ajay is clear, so is Santosh, so is Matthew, sort of says great session, all right, that was great. So with this we come to a conclusion of today's session. In case if you do have any separate questions or queries, you can put it across directly to me or if you wish to have more knowledge on Informatica tutorial, you can check out our blog, What is Informatica? A Beginner's Tutorial of Informatica Power Center. Hope you have a great day. Thank you for attending this session. I hope you enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply to them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to our Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!